Why is the Conservative Party planning to cut the money for schools? You're planning to cut over £3 billion out of the school's budget. That is no way to guarantee fairness. And when, well, well, in, in the government that, over that the last is, five years, that, that, your that's party wants wrong to as cut well. you've got, you've got £7 billion pounds for new primary school places. I have to say, it's, it, you know, with Nick Clegg, we sat in the Cabinet room together. We took difficult decisions together. Nick, I defend all of the decisions we took, and I think your sort of pick and mix approach no, really no, is no, not no. going to convince anyone. I, 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 I think Julie, they're both. I remember, I remember just, vividly just when your party wanted to cut spending for schools at the beginning of the last Parliament, and I said no, because you don't make society fairer by cutting the money that goes to nurseries, colleges, and schools. I, I think Everyone. they're both blaming each other, and they're both right, <laughs> uh, uh, Julie. Um, look, the, the, thing I would, uh, the thing I would say to David Cameron is, of course, his, his scares about, about free schools are wrong. We do not want a system in the future which has unqualified teachers. 17,000 unqualified teachers in our schools. But look, there's a bigger issue because Rebecca, who asked the question, was about asking about young people going into the world today. And you've heard David Cameron and Nick Clegg defend a system which ensures that young people leave university with £44,000 worth of debt. He didn't have to leave school with £44,000 worth of debt, nor did he. Now, nor did I. But the difference with me is I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to cut the tuition fee. Would I like to go further than £6,000? Of course I would. But it's a costed plan to reduce the tuition fee. And Nick, you describing a broken promise as the next best thing. I mean, I'm sure I'll remember that for the future. Uh, but, you know, it was a broken promise. You betrayed the young oh, people just, of our can country. I reply, can I reply Very to that? I mean, you know, I, I get this sort of pious... Uh, a stance from Ed Miliband. This is the man who was part of a government that said no boom and bust in the economy and crashed our economy, jeopardising the future generations and life chances of millions of people in this country. I've apologised. I've taken responsibility for the mistakes I've made. Why don't you, in front of the British people, Ed Miliband, apologise for we your role got in crashing... No, said... no, no, don't say. Not, nothing euphemistic. Say, I'm sorry for crashing of the course, British economy. Of course, Ed Miliband. Of course, Ed Miliband. Said we got it wrong on bank regulation. <laughs> We said we were sorry for what we did with, in relation to the banks, and the banks were under-regulated. But, but let me just yeah, point out, there was, a, bank, there was a global not... financial crisis. And let me just point this out. David, when you were in opposition at the time, as leader of the opposition, you were saying the banks were over-regulated. So I'm really not going to take any lectures from you about the global financial crisis. <laughs> <laughs>